So today something really, really wonderful has happened. I finally completed David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. That means that I am finally free of this book, which I don't mean to say that in a mean way because I actually really enjoyed this book. It's not a perfect book in my opinion. My reading experience of it was certainly not perfect. I will probably be telling you more about my reading experience of David Copperfield in the upcoming, um, in one of my future videos. But let me just say that I enjoyed the heck out of reading this book. Um, however imperfect an experience it was for me personally, but I, I am ready to move on to greener pastures, if you know what I mean, because reading this book took me a while. <laughs> It took me uh, like months. It took me like maybe something between, I don't know, six to nine months. Um, of course, I have been reading many more books in between. That's partly why it took me so long. And that's also my fault. Why this book was, uh, reading this book was not as great for me because it took me a while. But anyway, more on that later. But the thing that I want to say here today is it's over. I loved it. I can move on. So I am here with a TBR of excitement. It's going to be a, 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 an exciting, enthusiastic, I'm free of David Copperfield kind of TBR, if you know what I mean. I'm making it sound like I really, really didn't like David Copperfield or like I felt incarcerated or imprisoned by it, but I really didn't. I really, really loved it. And it's a book that I think is going to stay with me for quite some time. But when you read a book that absorbs you like that and that takes up all of all of your mind for six to nine months you're just ready for the next thing so i am here with an excited enthusiastic uh slightly ambitious tbr so um this tbr i am planning it for um march and april so uh in march and at the end of March and the beginning of April, I will be taking two weeks off from everything. I will literally do nothing except go to the gym and read. So I hope I can read all of these books from today until the end of April. So this is like a two month uh, loose TBR and it's quite ambitious. So let me tell you, I have started tonight Stephen Sondheim Alive by Merle Sechrist. This is, of course, a biography on Stephen Sondheim. S Stephen Sondheim is probably one of the few people that I can admire and look up to in, in this particular way. Um, Stephen Sondheim, Freud, um, maybe some other psychoanalysts, um, maybe some other um, authors like J.K. Rowling for me. You know, there's only so many people, like a few people that I can count with maybe my 10 fingers that I feel so passionately about. Stephen Sondheim is really like a, one of my idols, you know? Um, so I have read some books on him. I actually participated in a, uh, I was um, interviewed or I uh, participated in a podcast, which is uh, about Stephen Sondheim's work um, with Kyle Marshall. He is the creator and host of that podcast. If you want to listen to that podcast, um, the, the name of the podcast is Putting It Together putting it together bit by bit. Oh, my throat is so destroyed. <clears throat> uh, so the podcast is putting it together and there's a million episodes. And if you can find me <laughs> in one of those um, podcasts uh, talking about uh, one of the songs from Company, um, the title of that episode is um, 
uh, it's about company, the show company, and it's uh, the, the name of the song is uh, The Little Things You Do Together. So, um, love Steven Sondheim. I'm starting this tonight, and so far, so good. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Then I will also start reading A Confederacy of Dunces tonight. This is by John Kennedy Toole. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this. It sounds like something that I think I can really connect to. Um, but it sounds also very bizarre. Like, it's, it's so strange feeling that I think... If I can connect with it, I will love it. But if I just cannot connect to it, I will absolutely hate it. Um, so from what I can gather, it sort of gives me like catcher in the rye vibes with some satire and comedy, um, sort of philosophical and existential, but very farcical and very just hilarious. So yeah, it sounds... Uh, on paper, it sounds wonderful, so we'll see. Then we have, uh, okay, so I have um, Affinity by Sarah Waters. This is your typical Sarah Waters, uh, Victorian, um, female, romantic, relationship-focused, kind of gothic, historical thriller. I need that in my life. Um, then I have a short story collection by George Saunders. Um, he's my favorite short story writer at the moment. Well, for, for, the, uh, for the past couple of years, I absolutely adore his flair, his intelligence, his wit, his humor, and his creativity, I think. And also his writing style. I think nothing, um, nothing shines as brightly in George Saunders's stories as his writing style. <sighs> then I am starting the Live Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Hobb. Why am I yelling? I feel like my volume is just like completely off the charts right now. Um, so uh, the first book in this second trilogy by Robin Hobb is Ship of Magic. I really love this gorgeous Harper Voyager uh, editions. I think these are the British, the British editions. There are they they are so beautiful. Uh, just love them. This book is gigantic. Like uh, this is what eight hundred and eighty pages long. Jesus God in heaven. Um, but you know what? People say that it's great. And so okay, I'll do it. Then I have uh, The Morning Gift by Eva Ibbotson. This is a book that I bought last year or maybe the year before. I don't quite remember, but I've been meaning to read this for quite some time now. I love Eva I Ibbotson. I think she is severely underappreciated here on booktube. I, I think modern audiences are missing out um, if they haven't read the delightful prose uh, of Eva Ibbotson. I mean, she has written uh, a lot of things. Her most famous work is probably the uh, children's book, uh, fantasy, uh, a fantasy story that is actually one of the inspirations for Harry Potter. It's uh, The Secret of Platform 13. It's a whimsical romp, very, very fun, and very, like, roll doll esque and very, very similar to Harry Potter. I love that book. Um, but I have read many more books by Eva Ibbotson, and, you know, she does fantasy, she does middle grade, she does young adult, she does historical fiction, she does romance. I think this is a blend of, like, young adult historical romance if that makes any sense. But when I say young adult, I don't mean like, you know, Twilight or like the cheap, trashy, garbage kind of side of things. I mean, like the, the things you want your children to read <laughs> or the things that you wish you had read as a younger reader. So um, these books uh, that she writes for young adults are actually quite long. Like this is 
515 pages, and it's set in uh, Nazi-occupied Vienna. Um, so I really, really love what she writes. I, I think every single book of hers that I've read has received five stars or maybe four stars. Like some of her like really, really childish fantasy stories are a little bit silly for me now that I am a grown man. But uh, if you want to read something by her, just read The Dragonfly Pool, um, The Secret of Platform 13, but I think my favorite of hers is The Star of Kazan. Absolutely impeccable. Um, so I want to read this. Then I have a huge book, but I have heard that this is Stephen King's best novel in years. And that is this chunkster of a novel. So the title in Spanish is different to the to the original title in English because you know in English, um, in English you would put the numbers corresponding to the month of the year before the uh, numbers corresponding to the day of that month. So the title in English would be eleven twenty two sixty three, but here because this is my. Uh, Spanish copy, my Spanish translation, it's 2211-63, whatever, it's the same thing. So this is about, yeah, the assassination, JFK, and uh, you, you probably know what it's about. It's about this uh, man who goes back in time and tries to prevent disaster. Um, from that premise alone, I cannot say that it sounds interesting to me just because that part of American history feels a little alien to me, a Mexican guy. So it doesn't really appeal to me, but I've heard so many amazing things about Stephen King's writing and the ending in particular that I need to know if it actually is that good for me at least. Whew, so this is very long, but you know what? This is the moment, this is the day. So if I don't do it now that I actually have the free time to do it, I will never read that book. Then I have a Mexican novel, which is Huesos de San Lorenzo. Um, this was written by Vicente Alfonso and uh, it's published by Tusquets. Really like this cover, just look at that. That's like creepy Mexican, like, gothic, Mexican, like, hacienda kind of... Ugh, yeah, it just gives me some really amazing gothic Mexican vibes. Um, this is about a psychologist. Hello! I love books about uh, psychologists and people working in this line of work that I do because it's so kooky and I really, really enjoy that. It's kind of creepy and bizarre. Um, it's about a psychologist and um, one of his patients is accused of something really horrible and it's about a weird investigation and of course something is afoot. Something really, really strange is going on and it's short. <laughs> I really want to read, read it because it's short. Um, then I have... Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I know, I know. I was saying that I <laughs> I was criticizing young adult literature just like a few moments ago, but um, I have a weird, ambivalent, love-hate relationship with John Green because when I read The Fault in Our Stars and Looking for Alaska, I absolutely adored them. I loved those books. I was younger. I was living in New York with my best friends, enjoying life so passionately. And I just found those books in a, in a particular moment in life where I, I really appreciated them. I really loved the style that John Green has. I really loved the kooky, quirky, unbelievable characters. Um, I, I, I distinctly remember reading, binge reading The Fault in Our Stars 
on a bus. Uh, me and my friends, uh, we went on a on a tour, on, on like a bus tour uh, through. Uh, we went to Washington D.C. and I think we went to Virginia and some other places uh, along the way. And I was reading. The Fault in Our Stars on the bus, and I just love that experience, but I know that if I were to read that book now, I would probably have some criticisms. So I don't know if I will like the newest John Green book now. I have heard really mixed things about this. I've heard some people say that it's really good and really mature in a subtle way and some people say that it's the absolute worst book written um, ever so I need to know um, and finally um, the last book that I want to I really 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 want to get to this book soon Playthings by Alex Febby what is that what kind of a book is that it's no one is talking about that book yeah i know that's why i want to read that because read it because alex febby just wrote a fantasy dark a dark fantasy uh book called mordew which i am looking at right now it's on my tbr as well but it's long but this is a uh a previous work by alex febby and this just sounds absolutely incredible. It's Playthings by Alex Febby. And it's essentially a kind of uh, novelization of Sh uh, Schraver, uh, Paul Schraber and his life. If you don't know, Schraber is one of Sigmund Freud's most famous um, analysis. Uh, well, I phrased that in a very poor way. Let me rephrase it. Sigmund Freud has five uh, cases, uh, like clinical cases that he studies in his uh, oeuvre. Um, and one of them is Paul Schraber. So if you want to read more about uh, Schraber, you can go to Freud. You can read Schraber's journal, which is incredible. I re I've read all of that because I... I'm a psychoanalyst, and as a psychoanalyst, you need to know everything that Freud wrote uh, from beginning to end. Like, you have to know it in your heart of hearts. Um, so Schreber has a very interesting life. He had a psychotic breakdown when he was in his, um, in his 40s or 50s, I believe. And um, he has a very, very interesting case of... Uh, uh, some kind of paranoid uh, state. Let's just put it like that. Um, so, but he has a very interesting story, and and the way that he depicts his own mental breakdown and his own psychosis is absolutely interesting. And this is an I think a novelization of that. But he, I think he does something to that. Um, so I've heard nothing but great things. It's short. It's supposed to be really um, interesting in terms of the writing style and the choices that uh, he uses, uh, the devices through which he tells the story. So that is Playthings by Alex Febby. And that is my exciting TBR for March and April. If you want to tell me anything about any of these books, please feel free to do that. I would really appreciate it. And hopefully I will be reporting back to you guys uh, soon and let you know how I am doing with these books. Thanks for watching.